All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm a pixel tuner from the CA.org forums, and a couple of people posted the requests if I could show um, how I did my thumbnails for the environment of the week challenge. And um, actually, it's for me, it's a pretty easy process. Uh, but I'm gonna show you today how I do it, and hopefully you will you will learn something from it. Um, so as you can see, I use I've got this file open in Photoshop, and it's just you know a collection of uh, blank rectangles, and you can make squares out of it or whatever whatever suits you fine um, it's just whatever aspect ratio you're going for um, I've locked the transparency on um, it's one layer and I've locked the transparency on it so you'll never draw uh, outside of the rectangle so it's, it's pretty yeah, it's convenient for me um, and as you'll see in a bit um, I'll just draw every square at once with like custom brushes to just get a general shape language in there and just uh, I start with a, I just start with a bunch of random stuff and but you'll see that later first of all um, when I need something like a, 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 a more like a sci-fi environment or techie I don't know I'll just create a bunch of brushes for it, which uh, shape-wise uh, suit uh, suit the theme. And a lot of times I do it in alchemy. I don't know if you guys are familiar with alchemy, but it's it's a pretty nifty sketch tool, which uh, has all kinds of random freaky stuff. But it's it's uh, you can do some do some really cool stuff with it. Um, I'll just I'll have like a, a shape, it's called a speed shape selected and the effect I'm using on it is a gradient so as you can see it's just really really weird stuff um, I'll just do some random scribbles uh, it, as you can see it's uh, this brush makes really angular uh, shapes and it's really cool for like sci-fi or spaceship or whatever for I'm sure you're trying to make I mostly start with black and then I just do a little bit of gray to get a bit of value in the brush and then I add some white to get even more value and highlights and you know I'll just put black in there and gray and whatever um, until I have something that looks kind of useful or kind of interesting and well this is just for you know educational purposes so I'll just I'll just make something really quickly okay this looks like um, a cool shape and Alchemy is a neat little thing where you can just send it over to Photoshop with a, with a shortcut, so I'm doing it right now. It'll just make it a JPEG file, and you'll have it in Photoshop. So, oops. so what I'll do is I'll select the shape, do define brush preset, just make a brush out of it. <laughs> Random name. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'll open up my brushes wherever they are. Brush presets. There we go. Uh, let's see. It's, hey, where did they go? Oh, there. Over there. Huh? Yeah. I'll just uh, select it. I just created. There we go. I'll open up my brush 
tool thing where I can change it. So I'll just uh, blank out the file because I won't be needing it anymore. And I'll just do, you know, um, I put size jitter on um, on the brush like this. And I'll add some scattering. I'll add some rotation. I mostly do that to direction. So when you paint, it just rotates with what you do. Uh, so there we go. A bit of pressure sensitivity to the whatever to the um, to the brush to the value or the opacity. Sorry. And sometimes I even add. A dual brush thing where um, I'll just add some texture to it with some random random brush shape, just whatever works. But um yeah, yeah, it can't work yesterday. And some color dynamics where I just Randomly change the hue and the saturation and the brightness. So if I, if I select the color for the brush and I paint with it, it just switches color a bit. So it gives you some pretty neat effects if you want to do more abstract stuff or whatever. Um, and lastly, I'll save this brush as a tool preset. And what that does is it, I use it instead of a brush panel because um, it remembers all the opacity settings and um, and even the blend mode, if you put it on a brush, like I have a glow brush somewhere with, which is set to dodge, so it always, you know, it's pretty nifty because you can uh, do all kinds of color effects on brushes and you don't have to set it up every time you use it because it's, you have it in a tool preset. So, and you can do that for smudge things or erasers or whatever, it's just for every tool, I think in Photoshop you can uh, put presets on it, and I think uh, for me it's, it works pretty well. So anyway, I made the brush. I'll close this file, <coughs> and I'll select that brush, and I'll just you know make it pretty large. And just start painting into my rectangles, really. It's really, really going slow, by the way, because my computer just doesn't like being recorded. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and you know, it's a high res file and everything, but yeah. Um, so what happens is that with this brush, I actually kind of like it what it does, it, it, it looks like it's you know doing some kind of angular alien world things. I don't know, and uh. Just it's taking a lot of time to fill everything up. It's really not working properly. <clears throat> and um, so yeah, that's it. I I I I use I start with mostly black and then I add in some white just to get a, get some you know, value shifts in there and just suggest that, that there's some depth in there. And um, I actually, I mean, I kind of like it. 
I mean, for instance, if you look at this formula right now, I mean, this is just a, a, a batch of random shapes, but it really looks like some kind of, you know, valley thing or some kind of enclosed space with uh, rock, rock walls around it. I don't know. So when I find something which is, you know, looks like some looks like something, I'll just grab a a random brush. Or just a normal random brush, mostly one that's just this is like this is for mountains, so I'll just uh, I'll just grab a flat a flat flat brush, sorry guys, <laughs> and I'll just start painting in some you know oh crap there we go yep. I'll just start painting in some some flooring here. A bit of you know, a bit more mountain stuff or rocks or whatever. This is really simple. It's just you know, it's just a suggestion of something, and uh, it kind of looks cool already, composition wise. And uh, what I also do a lot is, um, for instance, if you look at oh, this one right here. Um, here. I'll just paint in some dark just to suggest that there's something in front here. And I'll I'll make a gap here with a lighter brush. And what I'll do is um, get my lovely glow brush, which is set to screen. And it's a just a soft brush, really. And I'll just paint in some white haze. Just to suggest that light is coming through. So, and I do that a lot of, uh, I do that a lot of, uh, times when I'm just doing the first batch of sketches, just paint in random spots of haze and light, so that it's like, okay, the light's coming from there, the sun, or another light source, I don't know, 